this meeting is being recorded. Hello, everybody. How are you? I think we're about ready to go here. Uh, preparing to live stream meeting. It's having trouble, though, is what the problem is. Uh, there we go. Starting now. It's moving up. It's moving up. I, I really don't know. Oh, it is live streaming on Facebook now. Okay, good. We got that straight. Good. All righty. Um, just, you know, we do this show a little different than we do the other shows. The other shows we we do by, uh, and I thought about doing it that way with a thing called OBS and then having an opening and all that. But I just like the simplicity of the show. So I, I've decided not to, uh, not to, to, not to do that. So here we are. Let me just make sure we're going out over Facebook. I go over here and look at my Facebook page, which is, uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm looking good. There are two people watching. It's, that's, that's two more than I would have if I had none. And uh, let's see how many people are out there right now. It's just not a lot. This is kind of amazing for the beginning of the show. Uh, there's Shecky, and there's Edward Berger, and oh, there's Andrew Deutsch. I see. Okay. All right. All right. Well, and and let me admit Steve Bender. He we he can be added to this mix. There he is. Hello, Steve. And Charlie Wallace is coming along here. Let me. Uh, this is this is getting to be a nice little group of people here. This is all very nice, nice uh, individuals. Hello there, Andrew Deutsch. How are you? I'm well. How about you? You always watch me every time I go out on Facebook. You pop up on my phone and I decide to pop in and say something stupid and then go back to my Yeah, I kind, of, I kind of like those little shows I do because they're they're just outdoors. I mean, you you know, you get to see the city a little bit. You get to see, yeah. you know, yesterday you saw Marjorie Punk out on Walking Home. Yeah. Yeah, I, that was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah, I know I've got a new I got a new puppy and I'm out wa watching him uh, empty himself in the yard and you pop up and oh, well, here's something more. Well, more interesting. In other words, you're saying the show that my uh, my outdoor rants are it's more interesting than a puppy pooping. Yes, more interesting than a <laughs> that's, puppy. That's the review. That's the review I'm putting in the in, in the trades for you. Yeah, Alex Bennett. <laughs> Walking what shows I, more interesting than a puppy crapping in the yard. What ad did we see on TV? where last night or today uh marjorie with the dog with no leg the dog with no leg and then it was, it was oh yeah it was on adoption yeah but it, but it was for for something like i don't know adidas i can't remember it was it wasn't it was for dog, like a dog adoption no it wasn't you, a dog adoption it was adopt a dog and then it was like this is courtesy of and it was, it was like a well, get a free beer well you know you, you know what you call a dog with no legs I was trying to think of that joke. It, it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter. He's not coming anyhow. Yeah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the worst old jokes that every every kid. Yeah. But I've got I've got my old dog, my new puppy, and my daughter came in with her little dog. So it's like yap fest in the house while I'm trying to work today. The two dogs like each other. Oh, there's three now in the house today. And yeah, they, 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 you know, the puppy, the puppy wants to play and my 10 year old dog doesn't really want much to do with I, it. I, I said to Marjorie the other day is, you know, there's always this, and you, Shecky knows this, every cartoon ever made about a dog had a cat in it and they were always adversaries, right? Yeah. And yet, yeah, here. I never had a cat and a dog who didn't get along. Yeah, me either. This and, was, this was the scene yeah. yesterday in the house. Oh, <laughs> the meaning of the meaning of the minds. <laughs> oh man, oh man. So anyway, um, uh, how's everybody? How you doing, Jackie? No complaints. By, by the way, you yes, you have a complaint. I was supposed to come out and see you this weekend. Oh, yeah. Well. I didn't see you. Now you don't blame it on me. I'm bl blame it on her. <laughs> Hey, Charlie, I owe you 20 bucks on the bet. I knew he wasn't going. No, it had, no but it had to do Marjorie has a friend, very nice friend. I like him a lot and his wife, his, well, girlfriend. And uh, we, she had made a, a deal to go eat with him. And I forgot about it completely when I made the appointment with, uh, with Shecky. So I had to, again, to say to Shecky, I'm not coming out this weekend because of Marjorie. And now you can double your money, Andrew, next week. <laughs> What an opportunity. What do you mean I can double my money? I bet, no, I bet Charlie, you weren't out. going. 
Oh, you <laughs> when did you bet Charlie I wasn't going? I didn't really. I'm just playing. But <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> no, I will be out this weekend. I, I promise. It's time for me to do that. So, Charlie, bet, bet's back on? Good. Okay. Yeah, you know, We're I'm, good. I think I'm sort of cavalier <laughs> about this non-pandemic we're in. But today I walked into the supermarket and forgot to put my mask on. And I was walking around for about five minutes. Nobody mentioned anything before I suddenly realized, oh, I'm not wearing my mask. And I kind of felt like maybe I walked in there naked or something. Yeah. Yeah. You Have you had that happen, Charlie? Yes. Or you forget to. Marjorie did it on a bus where she forgot to put her mask on. The woman very loudly reminded me, miss, miss. And then when I looked over, she went like that. Yeah. I that, that happened to me too. It was an obnoxious reminder in a store. I mean, I just take it off to go outside and I walked in and I forgot to put it on. Yeah. It's obnoxious. I said, okay. I, I wore mine. I wore mine into Costco and some guy was there by myself. My wife had something else to do. And this guy made a comment. Oh, you're still wearing a mask. You know, you don't have to do that anymore if you've been vaccinated. And I said, well, I was horribly disfigured in, in an accident. So I wear the mask. I'm sorry it bothers you. <laughs> Costco, you don't have to wear a mask anymore, right? Not here. I don't know in other states, but not in New York. In New York, when you walk you inside a restaurant, you have to wear a mask. As soon as you get to your table, you can take it down. New York, we don't have to, right? Uh, at Costco's? No. Okay. No, you don't have to wear it. Because I think I'm going to go up to Costco tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So Marjorie can come with me. I haven't been to this Costco in a year. And, three and I, just keep, I just keep the mask in my pocket in case something is said. You know, I used to spend all this money with them, uh, and, and I still do. But I, I spent I used to spend all this money with them at the counter, you know, just, just giving them my credit card and so on. And then when I started using Instacart, they don't count that towards the money you get at the end of the year. So it's your reward, yeah. It's your reward. Now, why not? I'm buying it. I'm using my credit card. I'm going to go. No, they're not. So. I, but you're uh, buying through Instacart, not theoretically through Costco. I see. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> I want to go back all kinds of rewards. There, shopping there because, you know, I don't want to have to pay like 120 bucks <laughs> this year when the thing comes in. So. Hey, so, Alex, do you guys wear masks in the hallway and in your elevator or stairs in your apartment? Yeah, not, not very in much. In my anymore. office building, you have to wear it on the main floor and also in the elevator. Because yeah, we still have to do in our apartment. I'm well, there's a kind of, is, isn't there a kind of stupidity that's going on here? I, I mean, work in the elevator. Alex. If you've gotten the vaccination, who's going to get hurt? You know, if somebody is in the elevator with you and they haven't had the shot and they've got COVID, you're not going to get it. Yeah, you know, I mean, and you you're not. If, you're going to get it and be asymptomatic and then give it to someone else not knowing. You know, it's, it's, it's never no, but, you know something. I don't think we know whether that's so. I mean, remember all the things we believed? Yeah. Marjorie, explain how we used to get packages from Amazon. Oh, I used to spray them. And they, they'd put them in the foyer, and we'd spray them and disinfect it and let them sit there for two days and marinate. And they had to sit there for a couple of days. Yeah. So I, I think the solution to this whole anti-vax <laughs> problem, the government needs to give the insurance companies permission to deny any health care whatsoever to people who aren't vaccinated by say july 1st now you said that last time that's a great idea I'll yeah it's if you, you you think you're safe that's fine the opportunity to not get sick is here if you choose not to take it you can't bill your insurance company or charge your insurance company for any medical services related to you contracting COVID. done that's i think it's a very good idea great idea uh, uh, but, I but you know you've got these states like texas so, charlie how texas, long is texas? <laughs> So, Ooh, so donate to my super PAC. You know, but I mean, he in Texas, they got a deal now where they cannot deny service because no. of, of, of non-vaccination. They cannot uh, uh, have vaccine passports have been made illegal in Texas. Uh, and I don't know why they did that. What does that serve? And secondly, these are this is like a Republican government, right? And don't the Republicans yeah. believe in free trade, and if a guy has a business and he doesn't want people who haven't been vaccinated to come in because he has other customers he wants to protect, then he should be allowed to do that. Am I sounding like a Republican? 
But one <laughs> other, how about how about we do this? If you have a vaccine passport, it gets you 10% off on funeral services. <laughs> <laughs> No? Yeah. no, but Texas believes it's better to pay homage to the Fuhrer than yeah. it is to save people's lives. Got to, got to kiss the feet of Donald Trump. Now, Ch Jackie's going to cheat on me, aren't you? What? I was another podcast. <laughs> what podcast? I thought you said there was a podcast that was asking. Oh, the Letterman podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what? Okay. Good luck on that one while you're cheating on me. What's what's the Letterman podcast? It's a fellow named uh, um, I can't think of his last name now. Mike Chism? something. And he does like a weekly podcast about the Letterman show. Huh. Well, Ooh, and he gets everyone on it. You know, he gets, you know, great people. Yeah. Yeah. But what are great people? Some of the big players over there, right? And also people who were guests on the show and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Are about you this, Mike? Like Do you know about this, Mike? See, Mike no, but you just kind of described my dream job. Um, yeah, no, I would. Uh, I mean, I do. I do a, a YouTube show that I've got like five or six, six episodes called Tales from the Late Show. Mm -hmm. um, the the podcast Shecky just described is something I would love to do and be a part of, and I've already got my phone here looking for it as. Uh, yeah, it's Mike, and I'm just going up right now on the last name, which I will look up and send to you later. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, but he's been I'm doing it about like two. He's been doing it like two, three years now. I have not seen it. Can't wait. By the way, I'm sorry for being late. I literally was at Costco. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> I may be late next week. I don't know. I have I have an appointment to have some blood drawn. And they said it'd be, um, it's 2.15, and I think I can get back here by 4 without any trouble. But she said I she double booked, so I maybe have to wait a little bit. So uh, I might not get, I, if I don't get back here in time, Marjorie will start the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's Ver Vernon Nunn, not Ann Nunn. He's using her <laughs> wife's computer, I would imagine. Maybe he's changed who he's identifying as. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. He could yeah. be. There he is. There he there is. is. You look like you're home. Yeah, he's yeah. home because there's all that ham equipment he's got there. You're back from vacation? Yeah, must be. Well, we'll let, let him get settled here. I think he doesn't know what he's where he is right now. <laughs> well, I have to go get this is an interesting thing. I have to go get my blood drawn. Isn't this wonderful, folks? You just tuned into a podcast and want some fun stuff. <laughs> You're bringing up the subjects, Alex. And no, but anyway, the, the, the great thing about it is, is that I, I haven't had my blood drawn for like a PSA test to see, you know, how I'm doing with the prostate just to make sure all is, in, in, you know, Vernon knows what I'm talking about. No, okay. so they know where where you're at and so on and so forth, and I haven't gotten a call from this doctor who did the seeds and the radiation and stuff to come in and do more. So I wrote them, and uh, first they didn't answer in on one thing, and then I then I wrote them somewhere else, and I finally got an answer from the nurse who said, "Well, you will, we can do it for you, or you can have your primary urologist do it." And I thought that was rather cavalier, you know. I mean, I should get it maybe every, I don't know, in the first year, every three months or something like that, just to see how it's doing. So I get a hold of my urologist, and he writes me back, and he said, can I say this? He said, they got $40,000 for your radiation. They don't give a shit. <laughs> he said, this has been a common occurrence where after you've gotten the work done, that's it. They don't care about you. They don't do any follow-up. They don't send me any reports on how you're doing. Okay. Uh, he said, do yourself a favor. Don't go back to them ever. Come see <laughs> me. I'll give you the, the blood test. It'll be ready the next day and everybody will be happy. And I thought it was a nice letter to get. I mean, he just said, Fuck them. You know, the hospital is not, <laughs> the hospital doesn't care. Yeah. You know, so I, I, well, they got their money. I, I found that. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. But I found that interesting. You know, 
that you can't trust the right. very hospital you'll probably someday die in. <laughs> because, you know, if I'm, an ambulance has to pick me up, that's the closest hospital to me. So, isn't it nice we moved somewhere where, at our age where we're close to the hospital? That's the priority. You have to be near a good hospital. Well, we we had to we had to we called Mount Sinai and got an ambulance for you. Remember? When I broke my my um my knee. Yeah, yeah, and it cost a lot of money. I don't remember. Not that. for us, but for the insurance company. But oh. we didn't get our money's worth. Remember why? No. They didn't turn on the siren. <laughs> oh, there was no siren i figured the one time in an ambulance god damn it turn on the siren speed and mm. traffic get away <laughs> oh they're just loping along how you doing your leg hurt not too bad damn man and then we get Can I ask you what, as an ignorant canadian yes stupid ignorant as opposed to the other kind of Canadian? <laughs> stupid. Well, I'll tell you, you know, you can say stupid after the question, um, or, you know, it might just be ignorant. I've heard many times the idea of Mount Sinai, the title of Mount Sinai Hospital. Is that like a franchise? Like, are there Mount Sinai's everywhere, or is there only just one? And There's I just heard of that one they hospital a lot. lot. They own a lot of hospitals. They, merge they do. Them. Well, they merged. Uh, they merged with a lot. They of own a lot in the five boroughs. Ex explain yeah. it, uh, Rick Shecky. They they just bought up a lot of hospitals and and also yeah. Built yeah. So there's a Mount Sinai near me. There's a Mount, but you go to the original quote Mount Sinai. It's not like it's not like Kentucky Fried Chicken and a franchise. <laughs> okay. I mean, they own all the stores. Right. Uh, and uh, they just uh, made it so that there was a, you know, there's a Mount Sinai near you. And since my, Mount Sinai, if you think about it, is a brand. Yeah, there's a Mount Sinai in Houston. Is it really? Yeah. There used Houston. to be one here. Oh, well, I don't know if they're maybe the same Mount Sinai. You know, uh, I mean, just because there's a Calvary church in one town doesn't mean the Calvary church in another town is the same Calvary outfit. Yeah. Most, most hospitals. York City is Mount Sinai. Yeah, most hospitals started from, you know, nonprofit religious charities creating hospital systems, and then they realized that they wanted to make money. So well, you know what happened? I think it was during, wasn't it, wasn't it during, was it Reagan who took the insurance we and made it, he made regulated it? it. It yeah, had to be a nonprofit organization, non insurance company, and and if they were still nonprofit organizations, you wouldn't be paying as much to the insurance company. Yeah, they actually have two Mount Sinai's in in uh, Canada, one in Quebec and one in Ontario. <laughs> yeah, I don't in the, in the real Canada. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't think it's the same <laughs> Here's what I always found ridiculous. Okay, it's called Mount Sinai, and it. So it is it considered a, a hospital owned by Jews? Is that what it is? <laughs> it was originally. I'm sure huh? it was. It, it was originally. It was owned by Jews. Yeah, originally. Okay. So and they still will have one bank of elevators that on Friday it stopped. Yeah, they have the what they call the they Sabbath elevators that yeah. you don't have to push a button to get to your floor because it goes <laughs> to every floor. Yeah. Wow. Because you're not supposed to use uh, anything, uh, you know. Is that a bit or is that real? Oh, it's real. No, that's that's. that's Are you the serious? Orthodox, Orthodox wow. Jews on on the will not use anything yeah. that's mechanical. That's that's operated that they can't operate themselves. Yeah, by pressing a button, that's doing work, so you can't do that. Well, they, you know, like in Brooklyn, they have the goys come in to turn the lights on for them. Yeah, uh, and wealthy, the wealthy have timers now with all this new home automation. It's made right. Orthodox living better. I was I was visiting someone <laughs> once, and I I had a Sudoku book, and they yelled at me and said, "You can't do that because you're using a pencil, and that's an instrument of work." And they brought out a Sudoku, which was uh, a bunch of little tiles that you you laid out. Because you couldn't oh, use a pencil, you could do it that way. But that's not uh, work. Yeah, no, that was that was okay. I never understood it. I mean, how do they? That's, who gets to define work? Like yeah. you can't, like, like you play the guitar. Rabbi, Rabbi Shlomo, you haven't met him. Like, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> playing, an, playing a musical instrument, which could be you know re relaxing and fun, is defined as work, right? You can't do it on Sabbath. Yeah. Why are you trying to put logic to the illogical and just go crazy doing it, man? I'm trying to figure out who we're missing now. Who, who accidentally got... Somebody's Vern left. Landy. Vern left. Oh, Vernon. Oh, Vern. He probably yeah. figured he was having problems or something. 
because he wasn't he wasn't reacting to us, which means he couldn't hear us. He just got back home, I think, from his vacation. So he's using yeah. his home system. Yeah. Oh boy, a happy a happy news yesterday. Netanyahu is no longer the prime minister oh. of Israel. Bye yeah. bye. Yeah. Bye bye, BB. Yeah, bye bye, BB. Sean look at the goyim. Well, our good news in California is tomorrow the mask mandates are gone. We are we're we're back to completely normal. Account. That's because you're getting closer to the recall. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, don't laugh. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, New York and he legalized marijuana. How's it looking yeah. for how's it looking for him out there? For uh, oh, I think very good. Yeah, I think he's I don't there's not gonna he's not gonna get recalled. There's no way. Okay, well, then that's what you see. That's what what's his name? The guy that got recalled before him. Well, yeah, Gray Davis. Gray yeah. Davis. So um, he, he was he was going on the assumption. Oh, they they won't recall me. You know, I mean, uh, I I think because of the economy opening and whatever, I think people are are not worrying about that. And the guy who's running against him, the Republican guy, is a nut job. You know, so he's running around with a with and, a full grown bear. And, and, yeah. and the other person that's running <laughs> rhythm is a no nut job. That would be. Uh, <laughs> oh, <Caitlin Jenner. laughs> yeah. Well, I figured out. I figured out a strategy for Democrats to win. The new law, federal law, to go to the polls, you have to wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you don't wear a mask, you can't vote. Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> that works. What do what do what do hold up guys at banks do now that they keep their mask off? Yeah. <laughs> If they're if they're Republicans, yes. Don't, don't yeah. let somebody. A, a couple of months ago, they showed these guys coming into a store and they were not wearing masks when they should have been wearing masks, and they robbed the store. And I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> the, the one time when you could get in there with a mask on, and they come in with no masks. On. That sounds like really idiotic human beings, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, crime crime went down when pantyhose went out of fashion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, are they, I watched the documentary on the recall of Gray Davis. Yeah. What went on during that. And boy, was that hilarious. I mean, the people yeah. that were running, anybody could run. If you, if yeah. you, you either had to get somebody 2,000 signatures. Is that or, when Arnold came in? Yeah, well, or, yeah. or you could just pay like $2,000 and get it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 2,000 bucks and a few hundred signatures, and I think you're in. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it was it was it was a clusterfuck. The people yeah. who were running were just—it was hilarious, actually. To be honest with you. Yeah. You know, you had the porno actress, and you. Well, had she's, she's running again this time, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I think so. And yeah. Gary, Gary Coleman. Mm -hmm. You know, and and uh, Schwarzenegger didn't get a majority of the vote. I mean, they I don't had, think they so. had 136 people running. Yeah. <laughs> Have to make him governor. No, but he got the most. He got more than anybody else. More than anybody else. Yeah. But I think he only got like thirty percent of the vote. Uh, or, or it was something like it, we're, what we have here, and I hate this. They're having this for the primary, which I now can vote in because I'm a Democrat again. Um, that you go in, you vote for who you want, and then you go vote for the second person you want. And the put them in the upper order. Want, and I think there are five five positions. Yeah. Five. Yeah. I mean, and they're but only you about don't five have people. to vote for all five. You could right. vote for one. Yeah, you don't have to rank anybody. In fact, right. don't, rank right. anybody, don't rank anybody you don't want to be mayor. In other words, you don't <laughs> have to you don't have to do the ranking if you don't no. want to. If there's someone you no, really you want, just pick your one off. person you want to quote be mayor. Oh, okay. All right. Because that, that seems ridiculous to me. You know that uh, I'm going to get the guy who got the most votes fifth. You know, I mean, if if so, if if everybody goes for their second choice and they're different people for the first choice, and the second choice is pretty much the same person, he'll wind up winning. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, and that's not the way it should be. You know, I just I, I am I an old fashioned guy who wants things to get back to where they were when I was a kid. You yes. Know? Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I like the ranking system. You do like it? Why? Yeah. Well, for one thing, it saves a ton of money. You don't have to have um, mm -hmm. the, you, know, you have the runoffs later, lately. I mean, later. Uh, it yeah. saves your whole money in a whole runoff election. So, so um, 
You, you legitimately could win by running a campaign telling people, please vote for me as number two. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shaq so, with coming in number two does. I, I was a, uh, uh, a judge at the San Francisco comedy competition. Shecky was sitting right next to me. Yeah. Mm. And uh, this guy we all know, a uh, comedian, came in number two both nights. But since they did it on an average, mm. okay, one guy won the first night as number one. Another guy won the second night as number one. So the guy who came was in was number two every night, won the comedy competition. Wow. And that's pretty much what could happen here. You could have somebody who is uh, uh, is number one, but uh, the guy who's number two, you know, it can operate that way. Uh, was, was it the same performers both nights and then yes, they did different, yeah, yeah. different yeah. material? Yeah, Shecky was uh, with me one night. Different I had, audiences. I had he and my, on one side and the other, my old girlfriend on the other side. And I said to both of them, now watch who I vote for and tell me if you think I'm right. In other words, mm. tell me if you think I'm, because I didn't want to do the comedy competition because I knew every comic in town. Right. You know, and I said, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be playing favorites here. Right. Jackie, that's pretty much what yeah. I told you. Yeah. So let me know if I'm, if I'm doing right in the, the, the score I'm giving them. And you pretty much agreed with what I was saying. Yeah. I can't remember now who it was, but they were very good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, back at that time, those guys were amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were on your show every morning, so that's how I got. That's how I got to know. Rob Schneider was one of them, and yep. um, my friend, the black comedian whose name it's escaped uh, me right uh, now. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Cle 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 Clayton. No, 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 no. You're you're thinking of somebody else. Uh, I'll think of it at the moment. I'm. I have my. I, I, I got I used to like it. Tom Kenny was great, and uh, Tom you know, Kenny I was on it. SpongeBob. Yeah. 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 Stephen Pearl, probably. I don't think Pearl was in that one. No. Shimmel? No. No, yeah. no. no. But, but it was, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember the comedian who, who lost. So they, everybody thought it was going to win. But, you know, it was a very good comedy competition, but I didn't want, I didn't want to do it. And yeah. they begged me, oh, come on, you know, do it, do it, do it. So I finally wound up doing it. And uh, after it was all over, and uh, Warren Thomas. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Warren. Yeah. Uh, was the comedian who won. Mm. He came in second both nights, but he won. And then all of a sudden, there are articles in the paper on how Alex Bennett threw the comedy competition. Oh, <laughs> and that's the reason I didn't want to do it. Because nobody, you know, I mean, I, I was going to get, I couldn't come out ahead on something like that. Yeah. Whatever happened to Tree? Remember Tree? I, uh, did, I heard from him about a year ago or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, I liked him. I always, I did him. too. He, he was good. very, he was a, he seemed like a really nice guy, but he had that yes, persona of being, you know, just well, there's a, com a comedian named Tree. Yeah, um, and I can try to remember his real name, uh, <laughs> uh, but his name was Tree on stage, and he had a really kind of weird, strange act. Mm -hmm. It was nothing like who he was, right? You know, uh, yeah, that was, he was, he was good. Yeah, I, maybe he was in that too. Mm. No. I don't remember him being in it, but no. maybe really big, tall. I don't remember guy. who the guy was. There was one guy, and I the reason I can't rem remember him is because I didn't care about him. <laughs> um, uh, and everybody said he was going to win because he was a lot, but he only won the first night. Second huh. night, somebody else won. Both nights, Thomas comes in twice, wins the comedy competition. Huh. So, you know. I mean, it's their fault that they ran a comedy competition where they didn't just do it on one night and say, who wins tonight? <clears throat> you know, but anyway, but that was a, uh, that, 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 did you enjoy that night, Jackie? That, that was good. Oh, yeah. 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 And I think then we drove down to like Yosemite after that or something. Yeah, we drove to Yosemite, but there was something that happened when we drove to Yosemite. I can't remember. You got bad <laughs> ratings. Here, I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> That must have been 1987. Warren came in while we were on our trip. While we're on the trip, you're calling in to find out what the numbers were. Yeah, and they um, were they were and they were mediocre. Can we call it? Mediocre. You know, in other words, you weren't number one in that book. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Warren, you know, this must be I the one you're talking about. That was my about. life. But I remember us, and it's got to be you. We booked into a motel near Yosemite, right? For the night. Yeah. And I uh, it was nighttime, and we booked into this kind of seedy, not too posh hotel, motel. And we get a room, and we um, uh, just the rest of our head and go to sleep. And I don't see anything outside. And I wake up the next morning and I open the window, the uh, curtains. And there is the most beautiful view out my window of a babbling, uh, this babbling brook there. And there's this and trees and everything and mountains. And I'm going, Checky, you've got to look at this. And while I'm talking to him, the truck that was on moved. <laughs> You remember that? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> right out of a movie. That's right out of a movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, this is gorgeous. How do we get this motel into such a gorgeous view? And all of a sudden, the view moves. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and then we uh, we went back home to San Francisco. <laughs> yes. <laughs> where I, of course, was probably depressed for the whole trip because my ratings were mediocre. Yeah. Uh, because you were making phone calls the whole way down, trying to get the numbers. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, my problem, the problem with radio is, okay, that when you were in school, you were constantly given tests and you were given grades. And you figure that when you finally leave school, you're never gonna have get grades anymore. It's a wonderful life, a gradeless, no, you keep yeah. getting grades of yeah. some sort, you know? And also, you kept hearing about the Warren Thomas situation while you're we driving. Yes. Oh, right. Right. And that was unfolding as we. So were. it was like a, a, a combination. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, when you were doing like the Letterman show, I mean, of course, you never had to worry about ratings because you in the early days we did. No, but what I'm saying is, you, I wouldn't think you'd take them personally, but probably it did affect all because it's a whole group of people like how many people were on the staff well in the early days barry sand would come in and go we just got another 13 week pickup and it's like you know a room full of people applauding well that's one thing pickups is one thing ratings is another like for instance well again now not to tell tales out of school <laughs> when we got to cbs certain members of our staff would bet on the ratings every night really Yes, and then we get to the morning meeting where several of them are now like, so what were the numbers? You know, not the, you know, whatever. What would the best everybody, be? Every, every, everybody wave at Mandy. Everybody wave at Mandy. Hello, Mandy. Everybody left, so. Everybody I left. Go, I see him walk past my window because I'm on the first floor. I'm like, bye, I'm getting him on meeting now. <laughs> <laughs> Shecky, what would the bets be? Five bucks, 10 bucks, more? Tell you the truth, I don't remember. Well, the thing is that, that uh, you know, in, in television, in radio, we used to get ratings every month. We Initially, when I first started working, they were like every three months. Then they became every month. These guys get them every Well, we get the day. overnight. We get and the and over. That was the point we were killing Leno. So these guys were just so euphoric that they're betting on the numbers. Yeah. Well, the thing is that that then, of course, you Grant went on Leno's show, and after that, you guys weren't number one ever. That is again. not why it happened. Why did it happen? <laughs> I told you this. Football. Oh, they got football. CBS lost football to Fox. That's right. I remember that. So on in San Francisco, we now were on channel. 99 or something instead of whatever kcbs or whatever you're what why they, move you, why they move you to another channel because they picked up fox oh so they could get football right in detroit we were on like channel 69 or something or 68 oh wow because they became a fox affiliate because they wanted sunday football well, let me ask you this then: How long, how long was it before you got used to being number two and it wasn't a problem? A couple of years, I guess. Yeah, 
Because I, I think Dave was a class act when he took the, I think Leno took out a big Well, he took out that billboard. Leno you know. took out a billboard oh. that said Jay Leno. We're number, number one, three? Number one in nighttime or late night. And so Dave took out a, a billboard <clears> that read what? I think it's we're number two. We're number it's three. Letterman, number three in late night. And it was gigantic. It was so much <laughs> bigger than Leno's. Oh, my God. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, you know, look, it was, in my mind, and I, look, I don't think it had anything to do with you, Grant. It had to do with O.J. Simpson and football. Really? Oh, okay. Because Dave would not touch the O.J. Simpson situation. And where Leno, Jay Leno embraced it. He was telling jokes every night. They had the Judge Edo dancers. And, the Edo dancers and all that kind of stuff that America loved. And yeah. Dave, I'm We're said sick of guest, one, <laughs> he said to some guests one night, I don't find a double murder funny. Yeah. yeah. No, it, 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 he, he, and he, he's exactly right. That's what we love about Dave. So, Alex, were the ratings that you got more meaningful to you from the radio or from the girlfriends from the night before that rated you? Well, let's see. It's a good question. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, I think so serious. I had, where, where the radio was concerned, I had a contract. Uh, with, with the women I was going out with, uh, I didn't. And so, therefore, it was more important to be able to get laid again. Oh. It was to get ratings, yeah. Yeah, so their personal bias had nothing to do I, with I had my I had my priorities. Okay. All right, I'm, where the interview's <laughs> over, you can go back to, your, back to what you were doing. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Mandy? I'm, I'm not meeting myself. I'm good. Yeah. How are you? How are y'all? Yeah, uh, and everybody left. Well, yeah, it's four thirty. The, the yeah, the person that used that had a problem with me talking so loudly. Apparently, she actually moved her office down the hall. Yeah. So I was already planning on getting on, but I've just been kind of busy. But then I just saw her and my boss walk out. So oh, okay. good. They got something going on. <laughs> they just left. They just left. Oh, oh, yeah. no, leaving together, there may be a motel down the road. No. no. I have to check the no, ratings. Just walk out. Oh, they check just the walk out together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, but, you know, so ratings are, you know, ratings are horrible. I mean, you just live and die by them. And, and uh, they're also a matter of ego, you know. And, but they also, they also never are steady. You know, they go up, they go down. As soon as they go down, you know, someday they're going to go up. And But the terrible part is, is the ratings come in, you all sit around the station. If you used to come in on a teletype, you know, or a fax or whatever, and, and all of a sudden they start coming out. And see what, my, mine was always the first one that came up, the day part, right? You know, you know, huh? And if depending on what, the day, what you did was whether everybody was joyous or not joyous. And, and since I uh, had the shift that was the main money maker on the radio station, rating, see, when ratings, people think ratings are uh, important because of who you have listened, how many people you have listening to you. And that's not really what is important. It sets the rate to the advertiser. That's thing, ad rates. Yeah. I could be yeah. number 20 in the market and still have a lot of commercials, but I'm just not going to be able to charge as much as if I was number one. Because you go on a, a basis of cost per thousand, I think is the, is the, the rating. Well, it was like one time I was at the butcher, and he's like, "Oh, your guys' ratings aren't very good anymore." And it's like, "Why do you care?" Yeah. Still, uh, <laughs> you want to watch our show? Ver Vernon's kind of You want to watch our show? Vernon, turn your audio off. Turn your audio off while you're scrunching stuff. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, no, I'm on my phone. <clears throat> I'm on my phone because when I tried to log in with my wife's laptop, the audio sucked. So I tried to reboot the computer, and of course, it went into an update. So now I'm sitting oh, here watching uh, it do an update. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, did you see in the Heights? Apparently, didn't make as much money as Warner Brothers or whoever it is thought it would. Who cares? Not my mm. problem. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, maybe it's because people watched it on HBO for, for, for not free, but you know. Well, they're saying it didn't do that well on HBO either. Really? Hmm. Well, it's I, a musical. Yeah. You know, people don't. You know, what can yeah. I say? 
would you would musical, you have yeah. gone to see in the heights if it were just in theaters no, I would have bought the D, the Blu-ray in six months. Yeah, would yeah. any of you gone to see any of you interested in In the Heights? I mean, how zero. Many, have I'm not even going to watch it on HBO. Hey, yeah, I'm not, not going to watch it at all. No, and I still don't know like, why people like Hamilton. It's annoying. You know, I'm not going to say yeah, it's not a. I agree, Andrew. But, yeah, but yeah. you know, like I'm not going to the Lowe's, whatever, and paying twenty bucks to see In the Heights. You know, mm. right, right. I can go to the Heights and be In the Heights. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, um, but yeah, Je Jefferson, uh, Hamilton, rather, I think we just haven't gotten around to watching. I, I, somehow, the idea that it was shot on stage doesn't appeal to me, you know. Um, and because also, if they're going to show you a, a musical that was done on a stage, then just take a single static shot of the stage. Don't try to make it cinematic. Mm. Does that make sense? No. Yeah, but it would be boring to watch, I would think. But well, but you, it, would be, it would be like sitting in the well, audience. Even if not, you watch tennis that way. True. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, but, man. If they, but if they make a movie about tennis, they have close-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I think I think with Hamilton, like that's on my wife's on my bucket list to go see in New York. But we haven't watched it on Disney Plus yet either. Um, we watched the first five minutes of it. I think when I'm watching a stage show. The cuts are me. It's me looking at this way and me looking yeah. that way and me looking this way, as opposed to a director saying, okay, I'm going to now show this part of the stage, this part of the stage, this part of the stage. Yeah. On but you. if it was one static <laughs> shot, I don't think that would be very entertaining either. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you somebody who used a static shot for all his musical numbers. Tell him, Shecky, you know, Fred Astaire. Oh. He told every director, you're going to shoot me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and you're not going to shoot close-ups or anything else. No, there were there were close-ups, right. and there's also a lot of capital. I think if you go back and look, Shecky, you're going to find it very hard to find a Fred Astaire dance number, at least back in the day, where it wasn't full body because he felt you had to see his whole body tapping. Oh, I don't disagree. Yeah. That's why I sit in the mezzanine at the theater because if you're in the orchestra, usually you can't see their feet because their head's in front of you from the other audience members. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And if you're upstairs, you're looking down. But the thing was that he he didn't, uh, he just wanted people to be able to see his entire body when he did a dance number. But the camera moved, right? It's not the like camera a moved. tripod just yeah, filled with him. Room. But, you know, right. you very right. rarely ever saw any kind of close-up. And then I go to see something like, I don't know, what was the... the uh, Francis Ford Coppola movie, um, uh, Cotton Club. And they're showing these dance numbers. And he's doing close-ups of faces and hands. And I'm going, show the goddamn body, Damn. you know? Because that's what, that's what the art is here. You know? Well, if you watch the Never Gonna Dance number from Swing Time, it literally, there's one shot, it lasts two minutes. No cuts. Right, right. You know, I think Gene Kelly felt the same way, right? You don't want to, because editing could, you could cheat with editing. You could, it's a, the movie magic rather than the dancing magic. Well, if you look at a scene, a number like Singing in the Rain, uh, it's pretty much a constant long yeah. shot of him, and, but it moves with him. You right. know. Obviously, I don't know if there's, if I know any cut there, except maybe it's at the very end. Well, sometimes there will be a cut because. Uh, you know, there was a little bit of a screw up. Can yeah, we call it? Better. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I, 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 I always, uh, but I, that, that was what I heard about Fred Astaire. It was another thing with Fred Astaire. If you ever look when he's dancing, his hands are like this. And the reason was he had what he considered extraordinarily long fingers, and he didn't like them, so he didn't want people to see them. So when he danced, he danced with his hands kind of like this. So you wouldn't get the feeling that he had big hands. Do you know that, Shecky? No. No, okay. I told Shecky some things he, he didn't know about. He couldn't care about. Or, well, <laughs> come on. The reason he doesn't know. <laughs> By the way, did you see who died over the weekend? Uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 Ned Beatty. No, Jack Benny's daughter. Really? Oh. That I didn't know. Oh. 80, 87 pancreatic cancer. 
Wow. 87? Wow. Jesus. Now, do you remember meeting her? Jack Benny's daughter? Yes. I met Jack Benny's daughter. We went to an old radio show in New Jersey. You went with me. And she was a guest. And we ran to her in the bar. Old, old radio show. It was like the Friends of Old Time Radio, it was called, or something like that. I seem to vaguely remember that. Yeah, you know, we and we met that. This is like in the 80s on one of your trips back to New York. Wow. Well, she was pretty old. Yeah, but lovely that... woman. Now she was she was uh, uh, physically Jack Benny's daughter, right? No, adopted. Adopted. Oh, okay. Okay. They all they all came from the same orphanage in um, Illinois. They all adopted George, George Burns' children, Jack Haley's children. Really? Wow. Uh, George Burns uh, and Gracie Allen. You got knowledge in your head. Holy With smokes. George Burns and Gracie Allen, yeah. they adopt? They, they had two children. They were adopted, Ronnie and Sandra. Ronnie was uh, adopted. He was adopted. Oh, wow. Well, why, but why? They all came from this same orphanage, and I believe it's in, either Indiana or Illinois. Did they all have... Uh, uh, um, what can we call it? Uh, uh, I think because they were working. Seed problems, or did they just? No, I think because you know the wives were working, so they didn't have time to get pregnant. Oh, I see. Well, but how do they keep from getting pregnant? I mean, in those days, you didn't have birth control. But then again, well, you... why were all the men screwing every starlet in Hollywood? Maybe well, they weren't having sex with their wives. Uh, they were screwing every star in Hollywood because they had contracts. I mean, like, you yeah. know, the George Burns, the Gracie Allen story that she said to one of her friends, I wish George would have another affair because then I get a new mink stole. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Yeah. I, 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 uh, are you approved about this, Marjorie? Am I approved about it? Yeah. What do you mean? About hearing this kind of stuff from no, not at all. people you know and love. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You know, this is going to be a lot of, uh, we have a guy named, named Jack Bishop. He does the show at uh, midnight Eastern. And uh, he's always doing stuff about Jack Benny. But I wonder if he knows Jack Benny's daughter died this weekend. How would he? I didn't know. Well, they didn't put out a press release. <laughs> yeah. I lost, we lost Ned Beatty. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. Yeah. 83. 83. 83. What did he die of? I I don't know. Looking purdy. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what he died of. Always think of the movie Deliverance with him. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, Network. Yeah. Network. Network. I mean, yeah. he was in a lot of other stuff, but he seems to get remembered the most for Deliverance when they did the obituary. Deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. No, Snooperman is the one they always bring up now. Exactly. Yeah, he, was nominated for, uh, yeah. he was nominated for Network. I don't know if he won. Yeah, he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor for Network. He was yeah. a great character actor. He was good. Yeah, I'm glad you guys mentioned that. I haven't watched Network in a while. I'm going to watch Network. I love that movie. That was a good movie. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it yeah, anymore. What I've <laughs> been watching him about halfway through again is uh, Defending Your Life, Albert Brooks. Oh, that's great. I love that film. You guys movie. should make more movies. Well, you know, maybe he doesn't have more movies in him. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're assuming he has movies left in him, and he may not. I mean, maybe not at this point, but even when he was in his prime, right? You had real life in nope. America and defending your life. But there, he's like Kubrick. There's like, you know, eight years between movies. Yeah. What we watched was the latest um, um, Woody Allen film. Uh, Tripkin Festival? No, Rainy Day in New York. There's another one, but um, you can only get it illegally here. It's in Europe. Rainy, rainy, rainy day in New York, and it was it was um, paid for and bought by Amazon, and then they the whole thing with Woody Allen happened, so they wanted to disassociate themselves from Woody Allen, so they gave him all the rights to the film and said, you know, you made it, it's yours, you own it, and then they bought it to play it on Amazon Prime. And now, they're, now they're in a legal battle. Now they're in a legal battle to get the prime flag off of the thing. No, it isn't on there. But oh, they got it off. It I, I, I read this last week. They were trying to get it off. Yeah, but he, 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 he they said we don't care. We paid for the film. You own it now. 
you, we we give up all rights to it. And then they bought it <laughs> to play it on Amazon Prime. Dave, what was the European one called? Rif Rifkin's Festival. I like it better than Rainy Day. Yeah, it's Wallace Shawn is the star. He's a very strange leading man. Wait a minute. Rifkin, what's it called? Rifkin? Rifkin. R-I-F-K-I-N. Rifkin's Festival. Rifkin's Festival. Yeah, it's about a guy who's, you know, his wife's in the movie business. He's a failed writer. He's got to go to the San Sebastian Film Festival. And he starts having these fantasies of classic movies in black and white that he's in. It's good. It's I, I like it better than Rainy Day. I'm pretty unequivocal, but you know. well, I mean, we haven't seen this one, so I can't compare one to the yes. other. All I thought about when I watched Rainy Day in New York is this is a pretty uh, nothing much film, average, a yeah. average film for Woody Allen. Allen, but it's really good compared to anybody else. Right, and you if know? anyone else had made it, people yeah. would talk about it and I say mean, it's a movie. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, very snappy dialogue, uh, you know, Good and also voice. the fact that he's doing this, doing these films at his age. It's unbelievable. And, and you get these idiots like Timothy Chalamet and Rebecca Hall giving their money back. What they don't tell you is that they get union scale for a Woody Allen movie. For Timothy Chalamet to give what? You know, what's it? A couple of thousand dollars a week? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's ridiculous, you know, because uh, uh, you worked with the guy. Uh, he, I'm sure you didn't dislike working with him. Nobody, ever, I never heard anybody say they didn't like working with Woody Allen. Yeah, it's not secret. You knew what he was accused of. But everybody's afraid that if they say they like Woody Allen or they work yeah. for Woody Allen, they're going to be considered, you know, and that's bullshit. It's kind of like, and Shecky Czech, will agree with me on this one, is that you had, uh, you know, Weinstein and you had all these women, women screaming about, oh, how could he be that way? And I, you know, I... I, I disavow any of my relationship with him or whatever and so on. And yet he won these women Academy Awards. Am I right, Jackie? He went out and yes. campaigned. He went out and campaigned. You know, you sleep with me, I'll get you an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. Shakespeare in love. That's all you need to know. Yeah. I mean, is there any reason why Gwen Paltrow should have won an Academy Award for that picture? But she also took the role away from some other actress. Yeah. Hey, I like Shakespeare in Love. Well, I know you do, but <laughs> I'm saying that that it was still Gwyneth Paltrow was, she was okay, you know. If you'll have sex with me, I will get you the lead in this movie. Okay, that's all. Yeah, so and then they turn around and say what a horrible person. Jackie. What? What, Marjorie? Jackie, who did she take it away from? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but you notice Gwyneth Paltrow has never said anything against him unless I haven't read that. I think no, I haven't seen it she hasn't. Okay, you know, but I mean, it's just to me, it, 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 in the case of uh, of Weinstein, all these women owed them that some of them owed them his their careers because he launched their careers with the film that he got them in, you know. And you know, again, I always go back, it's 1930s casting couch in Hollywood. Is it Scarlett Johansson who said she never will work for Woody Allen again? Because oh, no, she likes him. They're, no, they're, she, she likes him. Oh, she likes him. Okay. Yeah. She stood by him. I, yeah. I just. Scarlett, Emma Stone, Kate Blanchett, Keaton, they've all been with him. You know. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you know, I mean, apparently he's not, you know, that terrible. I don't believe the allegations against him. No. And also, um, and again, I, Mia Farrow is crazy. <laughs> I'm not saying it didn't happen. You know, whatever she's. Crazy is a kind word for what she is. Well, yeah. I mean, she obviously was obsessive about this situation. Otherwise, she well, would have let it go 30 after years 20 ago. 20 years, she oh, still 30. hasn't gotten the forgiveness. 30, yeah. 30 years. After we talked her. about this the first time, I went back. I mean, I watched that documentary that was, y'all were saying don't watch, or, you know, that it was yeah. so one sided. And it, it, it was, was. I'm, I just was rolling my eyes going, this is so clearly one sided. It's like, not a documentary, it's Pharaoh family propaganda. <laughs> Yeah, yeah and they say, a big HBO contract. Why did Woody not let himself get interviewed for this movie? Why should he? Well, he was supposedly asked two weeks before they wrapped. Yeah. Oh, really? And, and then like, they, they, what do I need this for? Then they started. Now. They started using stuff from his book. Right. Yeah. <laughs> which I um, understand they weren't allowed to use. But they used it anyway. They had somebody read "Be Woody Allen." Well, Disney cast him in those Toy Story movies. Woody? Woody? <laughs> uh, 
Oh boy. <laughs> boy. Oh boy. Am, I, am I sporting the wrong wood there? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's really sad about about Woody. Uh, and and uh, I think the Mr. Potato Head, which is not Rickles, there there's Rickles. rumors that <laughs> the two people that he had molested uh, one of the other characters in Toy Story. It, it's um, it's not uh, it's not written in stone, so we don't know for sure. I'm just hey, can I can I throw something out there that my wife and I are addicted to on Netflix right now that well, I never thought would be. Anybody here an F1 fan? Okay. <laughs> watch the first three episodes of that F1 show that's on Netflix and tell me you won't want to watch the whole thing. It's to the bell. As, soon, as soon as I finish the FU show. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a race car fan even a little bit in my whole life. Oh. And we are glued to this show. Really? Is it just a reality okay. show about a racing team or something? It goes through the entire year of the F1 season uh, from 18, 19, and 20. And by the time you get to 20, COVID has shown up and it's it's part. But there's only 20 drivers in F1. And by the end of the first season, you get to know a bunch of these guys. And it's, yeah, it's, uh, my wife and I both do not like racing and we are addicted to this show. It, I, it, does, it doesn't interest Check it out. me, but yeah. yeah. Well, let me know how it turns out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what well, I my you're addicted to wrestling too, so I'm not. I'm not you know, I want to ask. I'm going to fish you out of, but not addicted. I, I want to ask. But this Mar- F1 show is just wow. It's wanna, it's really Marjorie, really good. I want to ask Marjorie a question uh, because I do like tennis. Huh? I do like <laughs> tennis. Well, no, we know you like tennis. I am subjected to it every year. I do not. We've got five televisions. Now. We had guests staying here. I couldn't go into the guest room to watch it. They're in the living room watching whatever they're watching. I had nowhere to really go to watch television. But that's not the point. The point is, the point I, is this is what I don't understand. But I don't understand this. You watch a match, the final match. Okay. And yet... By the time you watch it, it's over with. There's six hours ahead. Yeah, and you don't want to, know, but you don't want to know who won, right? No, you're watching it in their time. But, but how do you wa- how do you watch it and get into it, even if you don't know who's going to win, knowing that the thing has already happened? It no, has, I think it, I think it played live at six in the morning, whatever time of day it was. It played live at three in the. The Olympics are like that. Yeah. At three in the afternoon, which was nine o'clock in the morning in New York. Really? Okay. Yes, I saw I, it because I kept running in saying, "You know, I just read. I know who wins this. You don't tell me." You know, and I'm going. Well, I put it on like pause. We no, I put it on pause when, when we went out. I was watching it. Yeah. By the Anybody way, anybody been watching it? The Handmaid's Tale? Yes. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's good. good. I'm just trying to get through it, though. It's really depressing me. I'm just, uh, I just want to know what happens. Because everybody, well, I, I, I just There's heard that they've light. gotten the rights to turn it into a musical on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, just, I just those, wonder those how it's going to end. Well. <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants to see a good rape musical. Yeah. God. Did I hear Elizabeth Moss is right that they're thinking yeah, about yeah. trying to take the show younger to Broadway? No, they're talking about a movie. A movie. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, boy. You know, kind of like that Sex in the City movies they made a couple of years ago. You know. Oh, yeah, that thing was really terrific. <laughs> <laughs> boy, let me, let me know when Younger the movie comes out so I can get to the theater and be the first one in line to see it. I kind of well, watched not- that show. It used to be good. The well, season not- seven, well, the, I can't- the last year, they didn't really need to be. They just yeah. stretched it out. Yeah. Lightweight, but the rest of it, we sat there watching it because I got Paramount Plus or whatever that thing is. And I heard of the show and I started watching it. And then Marjorie Roth watched it with me and we watched all six seasons and thought mm-hmm. it was. It was terrific. like on the CW, you and know, it was I on that. Checking, I said, no, it was on watch. TV Land. You should. Yeah. Oh, yes, TV Land. That's it. You're you right. should watch the show, Shecky. And he said, What's it called? I said, Younger. It says, you haven't been watching Younger? And I suddenly realized it had like <laughs> six seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I went, oh my God. I but you know, it, was on, it was on TV land. Why would you know it existed right. for years? Or, or uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, or Shit's Creek when it was Shit's on Creek. 
crackle or something. Pop. Yeah. <laughs> it was on pop. In oh. fact, Schitt's Creek didn't start getting momentum until its last season because it wound up somewhere other than crackle. HBO. H no, not HBO. Um, Netflix. Netflix took it then? Yeah. I can't get into that show. I want to watch it, but I oh, can't get past. I, I didn't. Get, I couldn't get into it either. And then I watched a couple episodes, and it really starts to get, you know. You okay, like, okay. I just need to stick with shows, it, right? Yeah. Yes, season yeah. two, they start to get it. You know, the okay. first season okay. is kind of like, yeah, okay. You trying know. to figure out what they are. Yeah, yeah. It took me like half a dozen episodes. I almost didn't continue, and then it got really good. Yeah. Okay, well then I'll give it another try then, because I just my sister's like, it's so good. You've got to watch it. It's and very I'll give, Andy, I'll give no Andy's credit. Louder milk is really good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I we watched two episodes of Louder Milk, but Marjorie hasn't said, let's watch another episode of Louder. I'm now in season two. So you know let's, let's go. The first let's, episode of season two more, is the best. Let's <laughs> short, let's do a few more episodes tonight and see where it's going. Okay. We still watch, watch two episodes of Louder Milk. The first five minutes of the first episode of season. Yeah. Two. Oh. Yeah, the first five minutes, you got corrected. <laughs> what season? The, the first five minutes of season two in the coffee house is one of the really funniest. Funny. Really funny. It's it's everything you've ever wanted to say in a coffee house to, <laughs> to, to a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll stick with it. Hey, listen, I just looked and we're, uh, we're out of time. This is so pleasant. I like this. You're a great bunch of people. And, uh, you know, if you're out there watching us, you know, you can join this too. You know, uh, we, we don't mind it when we have a ton of people here. Uh, uh, except uh, Edward Berger never says anything, but when he does. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Another successful hour hiding out from my parole officer. <laughs> Show us your ankle bracelet again. That was cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that next week. <laughs> uh, we I'm should, sorry, you're Mr. We should, we should come up with some kind of <laughs> thing like Porky Pig said, yeah, that's all, folks. They have Burger do to kind of close the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe some kind of like goodbye, like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, I don't yeah, like bad is, language. No, you know what it should be? It should be like Eric from our Eric Cartman from South Park. Yeah. Screw you guys and going home. I'm going home. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's, that's better. Try that, Try that Edward. Screw okay. you guys, I'm going home. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Score. <laughs> okay. Burger, ladies and gentlemen, Rick Sheckman's here and Andrew Deutsch, uh, always uh, very funny, Andrew. Uh, Steve Bender, great to have you here. We are going to get together soon now. You're taking bets on that one, Andrew? Yeah, send me your, send me your phone. I'm going to check with my bookie on that one to see what the uh, odds are. Right. Yeah, yeah, let Andrew and me yeah. know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys taking bets? Uh, I got to yeah. check with my bookie. I don't know what the, I don't know what the, the odds are on this one. Uh, the over-under. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you to Mike Chisholm. Thank you to Len LaFrisco. Thank you to Mandy O'Brien. Always love having you here, Mandy. And and you're risking your job to do it, which I exactly amazing. <laughs> uh, Marjorie, Marjorie Myler, is it Myler? <laughs> and and Marjorie, Taylor, right? a nun who hasn't said much today, but he had trouble getting on, right? He had a you were having trouble yeah. getting on with your wife's uh computer. The computer decided to do an update right when I was I tried to log in. Oh, well it's gotta be Windows, right? Win Windows. <laughs> Windows 10. Yep. Tell it to not do automatic updates. I took my mm. automatic updates because I'll try to figure that out. You so know, it doesn't you know, happen again. You don't want that. It always happens, yeah, when you're having like a Zoom meeting or whatever. Anyway, thanks to all of you. If you all wave goodbye, I'll wave goodbye as well. And uh, we're not um, waving, Alex. Well, oh, I okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can see I'm back in my hand shack, 